organization, but it perhaps helps product or drive organizational change. So, we have found in the FAA that people, our own employees, and our business partners, so the FAA has about 44,000 FAA federal civil servants, and about another 18 to 20,000 on any given day, depending on the project load, of our business partners. So we find that the people still remain somewhat of a weak link in preventing and responding to incidents. Now you may say to yourself, Christopher, that's harsh. Well, it, it's a reality. Perhaps it's different in all the other agencies throughout government. Perhaps it's different in industry. But we have found that these men and women, whom are, are patriots, they're civil servants, they really don't wake up in the morning and say, I think I'm going to go open a Facebook account for my government computer within the DMZ and infect the FAA <laughs> with a, a cyber virus or something like that. They don't, they don't think that. But what they don't recognize is even though they take the savvy training and although we have uh, professional conferences and we send out broadcast messages, they don't realize how, how good, sadly, good these bad people, bad countries and bad organizations are at what they do. So one of the things that we've talked about is that the technology must enable us, us being the Cybersecurity Management Center, the Chief Information Security Officer, and about <coughs> 500 men and women in the FAA, security analysts, uh, program analysts, program managers, sysadmins, network administrators, to match the security posture to the risk environment. Just as we have the uh, online security levels, we have our Infocon levels. But we need to match that with the types of tools and technologies that help us get there. So interestingly enough, I'm going to talk about a couple things on behalf of the FAA's Chief Information Security Officer that he has uh, started to bring into the fore. And these are, these are somewhat, they are definitely emerging technologies, but Maybe while you, uh, we, we talk about this, you can think along whether this, for example, advanced data visualization. This is taking a Microsoft Surface Table, which has just been developed about uh, six, seven months ago. It's, it's come to uh, actually come out of beta. And uh, it's actually just about a little bit larger than a coffee table. And the, the thought is to have an opportunity to bring in uh, geospatial information as well as visualizing attacks, sharing incident details, rather than having to go to a workstation and bring a senior executive in front of a laptop during a moment of crisis, he or she can sit in front of, literally just sit in front of this, and of course it spins around the table, you can, you can redirect it on the table, and actually connect to multiple service units for collaboration. So we don't have to get everyone on, a, uh, on the same page. We have, for example, what we do today, uh, VTC technology and telecons, very effective. But at the same time, we can actually all be looking at the same thing that our analysts in our 24-7 center are looking at. So it's an interesting way to bring it together. So we would consider this, I guess, one form of emerging technology, perhaps in, it's definitely a product, is it not? It's a product innovation. But it also bleeds over into a process innovation because it changes the way that we do business. Instead of picking up the electric telephone and saying to a, the administrator or the deputy administrator of the FAA, uh, saying, sir, ma'am, you know, we've got a problem here, this is what's occurring. And they always say the same thing to me. They say, okay, Christopher, stop. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Start again and use much smaller, you know, non-technical, don't give me that geeky speed. I thought I already was doing that. I thought I already was doing that. But I have got a problem. We have a major problem. But we're working on it. But it's very interesting. And, and of course, the CIOs, they have to, and, and, and as Bob is one, and the CISOs that I aspire to be, they need to start thinking. And there's no cliche here. There's no euphemism. But it's to think out of the box. Look at the visualization. Share that information together. Now, one of the things that we see within advanced visualization, and this is what is actually a screenshot off of the Microsoft Surface table. You'll see in the, in the back, I apologize, if you can read this, my father's a retired ophthalmologist, so you get 2015, 2020 credit on here. I'll write this slip, go get your, uh, your glasses. But basically right here, advanced visualization, what we're bringing in are some of the key, these are air traffic control facilities, these happen to be anything that starts with a Z in the FAA, Denver Center, Washington Center, these, these are air room traffic control centers. And of course those are about 18,000 to infinity, normally working airspace is 60,000, above that are super secret, all kinds of stuff that we're not supposed to talk about in public, let alone on the camera. But one of the type of things that we have, we have the generation, we bring in the feed from a security information manager tool. And there's some world class ones in the room, but basically we bring in that information and we can bring up the actual location. You can see in the background, ladies and gentlemen, that's the contiguous United States. Then uh, ZDC, Washington Center, is located just west of uh, Washington metro area. And we can bring up the site name, the POC name, everything is available to the senior executive, all the way down to the desktop. And we actually can bring in wireless IDS, because we utilize about 1,500 of those in the FAA, at the centers. 
And we can actually not only bring it to the desktop, but we can actually, it's amazing technology, you can actually key it to the stanchion, you know, E6 cubicle 4. And I hate to be that man or woman in that cubicle, but one of the things that occurs is that we are actually able to bring it right down to the desktop and, and see where the problem started. Now, we at Team CSMC are not authorized to take offensive action. Hopefully in the next four and a half years before I retire, you know, lightning may strike, and that would be fun. But we've been a defensive organization for the last decade. But clearly, this geospatial information that is, that is merged, or we use a term at the FAA, mushed, mashed up, if you will, into this actually provides senior executives with a click to see everything that he or she wants. And it makes our lives as mere mortals working for these, these men and women so much easier because when they ask these questions, we get a click. Oh, you want to know where the, the center is, ma'am or sir? There it is. If you want to know, oh, well, that, that's the contact information. This is what we saw. This is what's affected. Red, bad, bad, green, green, good. It actually works very, very well. Now, this is in uh, what we would consider about six to eight months away from being uh, operationalized, which I know is not a word, but it seems, <coughs> it seems a pretty uh, sexy way of saying it. <coughs> now, data visualization uh, either mush up or mash up. When I was a little kid, I used to say mush. So clearly, the mashup of the geospatial and facility management information. So I brought to you the map. This happens to be a map of my facility, so I'm not giving away uh, corporate ideas or thoughts, but you can actually click on it again and bring up the actual area by stanchion and cubicle, and, and you can go right to where it is. An amazing piece of technology assists the senior executives to understand what the problem is, and then we get their authority, and we can send our CERT team, our incident response team, to the location and take care of business as quickly as possible. So you can pick up, for example, this is an unauthorized AP. So mashing these with facility management information provides us a pretty innovative way of doing business. Now again, this is a form of a new product, an innovative product, but it's merging now not only to the way we do business within process, but we're starting to get to the leading edge or the leading edge of organizational changes. Because you can imagine, if you will, come back to me and think if you were the facility manager, you get the phone call. It says, hi, I'm Christopher from the Cybersecurity Management Center. I was just with uh, Administrator Randy Babbitt, and he was very disappointed to hear that in your facility appears you have an unauthorized AP causing us all kinds of grief. Can you imagine after a few days they do the hot wash, how that's going to change? Uh, that facility manager, he or she is going to say, you know what, we need an organizational change within our facility to, so this never happens again, right? That's what we don't, we don't want this to happen again. Bad on me, but we're not going to have it twice. So it's an interesting way that it, these types of things can blend over. Now, we're moving away from Microsoft Surface as one of the emerging technologies of the FAA, and we're going to what's euphemistically called in the family FOAC. It stands for first of a kind. This is something that uh, Colonel Brown had visualized about in his mind probably about two years ago, where he wanted to get to the next level of visualization, and we're working towards that. Now, this is a rather busy slide, but I can explain it in, in very easy details. The bottom line is, many years ago, about 10 years ago, when I interviewed with Colonel Brown to take over the CSMC that actually didn't exist, uh, one of the things that we were worried about, he was looking for fusion. He was talking about fusion, and I was thinking, well, nuclear, nuclear has fusion. Sometimes if I flew a turbine, <laughs> we have fusion. There's a lot of fusion in life. But uh, what he was looking at was actually the collaborative approach to um, working with uh, social networking sites that were coming uh, to the whole, for the comprehensive information. He was looking at integration and correlation of data. This was before, about 10, 15 years ago, the, uh, the security information manager tools were just in the, in the forefront of coming out. They were an emerging technology all their own. So we were looking to consider bringing in the internal data feeds. We're looking at uh, IDS and IPS sensors, as well as firewall logs, and, and ArcSight, and NetFlow, Q1, it doesn't matter what you're using. Whatever you're using within your organization, bringing that data, rather than having, an, for example, today, a, uh, an administrative um, first-level analyst in my facility. We have about 20 of them on various shifts. They actually are, it's good. We're looking at four or five screens. That's not bad. They used to look at eight or 10. I remember about, uh, oh, probably six, seven years ago, I spent the money for the T's so that we could have four, and I'd have four here.